Welcome to another IB Environmental Systems and Societies video. This is part one of our exploration of topic 2.2, energy and biomass in ecosystems. We're going to start by understanding how ecosystems are sustained through the continuous flow of energy and the cycling of matter. Let's get into it. Ecosystems are open systems, which means both energy and matter can move in and out. Energy flows through ecosystems in one direction, while matter cycles repeatedly within ecosystems. This fundamental concept is governed by the first law of thermodynamics, which states that energy can be transformed from one type of energy into another type, but it cannot be created or destroyed. In ecosystems, the primary energy transformations occur through two main processes. First is photosynthesis, and next is cellular respiration. During photosynthesis, producers like plants convert light energy into chemical energy, and they store it in glucose molecules. During cellular respiration, organisms break down those glucose molecules to release the energy that's stored in them, and that energy is in a form that they can use for their life processes, which we call metabolism. Producers, which can include plants, algae, phytoplankton, and photosynthetic bacteria, form the foundation of ecosystem energy flow. They're unique because they can produce their own food through photosynthesis, making them autotrophs, which means self-feeders. When they store energy in glucose molecules, some of this energy can be converted into biomass, the total mass of living organisms in an ecosystem. Cellular respiration is crucial for all living organisms because it releases the energy that's stored in glucose. However, this process isn't perfectly efficient. Some chemical energy is always transformed into heat, which is then lost to the environment. This inefficiency is described by the second law of thermodynamics. Consumers obtain their energy by feeding on other organisms. There's remarkable diversity in consumer feeding strategies. Herbivores feed directly on producers, while predators hunt other animals. Parasites might extract resources from living hosts, and detritivores consume dead organic matter. Saprotrophs like fungi and certain bacteria secrete digestive enzymes to break down and absorb nutrients from dead material. And scavengers will feed on organisms they haven't killed themselves. In an ecosystem, all of these feeding relationships create food chains where organic matter and energy flow from producers through different levels of consumers. Each level in the chain is called a trophic level. Producers from the first trophic level, followed by primary consumers, those are usually herbivores. Then we have secondary consumers, often omnivores, sometimes carnivores. And then finally, we'll have tertiary consumers, which are your carnivores, and sometimes we'll even have apex predators, which are always carnivores. Throughout these trophic transfers, there are inevitable energy losses. At each step, some energy is lost as heat through cellular respiration, some is not consumed or digested, and some energy goes into movement and other life processes. This inefficiency in energy transfer is a fundamental principle that shapes ecosystem structure and function. In the next section, we're gonna explore how these principles affect ecosystem productivity and biomass distribution. And until next time, happy learning.